definition of civilian disabilities beforehand, but that is not what matters. What matters is the explanation of uh, what they do. So let's have a language, whatever language, let's have a language. L can have relations, functions, whatever, constants. So this is the language. And just for convenience, let's have a linear order, you know, among the actions. And the theorem of Mastowski says that whenever you have a linear order, I, and whenever you have a theory with infinite models, T, then it has a subset of order type I, which is indiscernible. And what does it mean to be indiscernible? Whenever you have an ordered n-tuple and another ordered n-tuple, then they satisfy the same formulas. Hello. Sorry, you started just a... Why, why do I call it porridge? indiscernibles or silly indiscernibles because we know they are indiscernibles but M doesn't know. M does it for every formula but it doesn't know it for all formulas. This is a difference very important in logic. It does it for every formula but it doesn't know it for all formulas. There's no quantifier over the formulas. And only when satisfaction predicates it, enter in models of arithmetic, models of very strong theories like the FC, will, will you be able to do something like this for all formulas which are without unbounded search quantifiers or for all formulas and then you have the predicate to be true in L, satisfaction in L. This is for models of set theories. Are you talking about first order theories? Or? Yes, every first order. So, I don't believe in existence of second order things, I don't believe in set theories, I don't believe in large cardinals, I don't believe in anything. I will be telling you how things are, without, hopefully without much bias. Well, to try to explain it without bias is already some bias, but... <clears throat> So, monochromatic sets, we know they come, how, how they come in a grand theory. Monochromatic... Just, just another, another question. So, you have a theory. A yes. theory with a predicate for with this linear order, right? Yes. Okay. Um, then, uh, uh, um, really, linear order is not needed. You, you can introduce it for exactly the same reason as you do it in, in your uh, theory, that linear order helps. But uh, sometimes, uh, um, you see, we want n tuples. If we wanted them to be one indiscernibles, then it would be, enough, would be enough to say that this satisfies exactly the same formulas as another point, and no, no, no need for the, for, for the order. But these are n tuples. And of course, if you, if you change, then immediately, so in, in immediately this, they will start. this formula, they appear as constants, right? Those uh, elements of the They are elements of the model, yes. They are, they are constants, right? You, play the role. You, you look at them as constants, right? As elements of the model. Elements of the model, yeah, yeah. To prove Hans Mastowski's theorem, you introduce Hemkin constants, you order them, and then get the whole completeness construction uh, to generate the model including this indiscernible ordered as I. So this is in the proof, in the proof of the theory, to use them as... So you can give it in examples, right? I guess, at this level. You can give examples, right? Lots of examples. Like it, first order in theory, the real numbers, for instance. Could you show for, for example, example? Every, every point is in the, is in the, the whole R 
here is indiscernible. Well, you're for I, it's, you, it's really not because I mean, if you look at it, they are indiscernible. In the theory of fields, right? It's a field <coughs> order field. You, you have a yes. zero, you have one. There are some points in between. Positive. Yes, points with names will, which, which are definable will never be indiscernible. This is, indiscernibles are porridge. There is an infinity of them. They all satisfy the same n types. And uh, if one of them was a name, then, then all of them have, have, would have to have the same name. Zero can never, can never be indiscernible. Yeah, I mean. Okay, let's give an example. I mean, I'm just trying to understand the notion. This is an example. You this, have, is, this is an example. Yeah, you have. But what is the theory in this case? Theory. Of, that is the density of this. Oh, in density of this? Yeah, okay. My something more interesting. Okay, let's see. Theory of uh, ordered field. Ordered field. Small field. So, grab whatever. What? I example what, so many decimals. Whatever. Grab whatever linearly ordered set I. Okay, let's and, uh, line, let's see. and apply completeness theorem to them as indiscernibles. So, whichever n tuple of them is of the same time as whichever tuple of them here. But because you are doing this compactness procedure, you are building the model uh, like uh, in the Hankin proof of uh, com completeness theorem. There will emerge a zero, there will emerge the other side, there will emerge this point plus this point, maybe here. It will be a hull, a scolium hull generated by this, this, by this constant. So it will be a possibly complex field. We don't know which branch of the compactness argument this will represent. But we know something. We embedded in discernibles first and generated the model from them. So usually they are not very constructive. So you cannot give an example, a constructive example for, for this theory, for the theory of ordered fields. It's a constructive example of um, discernibles. Yeah. I think I can. Um, and with, and with, with all the graphs and with all the fields, I think. Um, you can build it out of polynomials uh, in, and rational functions uh, with polynomials. Uh, um, grab a, a canonical example of ordered fields, syntactic examples, all polynomials over other polynomials. Rational functions. And you have extra constants, extra constants, um, making it uh, even more non archimedean And do the uh, all symbolic uh, manipulations with them: multiplication, addition, <coughs> division, or from binary zero, etc. You're, you're taking a field extension of our. Yes. Okay. That's... You can take a field extension which is very constructive. With, with new discernibles about it. You have a transcendental field extension with them. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Theories which are simple will have uh, very constructive models of, uh, of with, within the yeah, I'm just very curious to see the real uh, set of real numbers which have this property. I mean, it's not going to be a, Like if you take a set of, I don't know. Uh, oh, usually. Uh, Transcendental. Uh, Grab an ultra product, it will have indiscernibles. Yeah, product, okay, but the real line. So. Grab the ultra product of the real line. But Can't it's inside things. the real line. Let's say if you take a set of, uh, a set of, uh, embed a set, I don't know, rations into the transcendental, transcendental independent elements of the real line, independent over the, the, the rations, let's say, or algebraic numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Will they be indiscernible in the first order theory or what I mean? Uh, depends in which part of this field you embed them. Because if there's a name above and a name below, then all of them have to be between these names. Be 
because right. time, times have to be respected. Right. Right. Model theory has to be respected, but nothing else. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're very interested in the same examples. I think it's not as okay. you, you know what? We'll come to that. Okay. Because we haven't yet understood where any examples came from. And I want uh, to follow my plan to, do it, uh, to make it a historical talk. So I want first to show you one quantified examples of indiscernibles which uh, appeared in the early history of logic, in the cradle of logic. Uh, the prototypes of all indiscernibles that <coughs> came to life later. So the first example may not seem like indiscernible, but it is. It's the tree, computable tree, <coughs> without a computable branch. Computable, finitely branching tree. Without a computable branch. was invented at the same time in uh, the Soviet Union and the USA, but uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the fathers of computability theory, like um, uh, Alonzo Church already knew about it, and Gödel knew about it, but they didn't think in terms of trees, so they didn't publish anything like this. So it's known as the Klinizaslavsky tree. Zaslavsky was student of Schein and Markov in Leningrad. And after his arrest, um, after they got him out of prison, he married an Armenian lady, moved to Yerevan, and uh, started the Armenian School of Computer Science. They all come from Daslavsky. I, I don't know whether he's alive now. Uh, it was alive 15 years ago. I exchanged some emails with him. I googled it, instead of remembering how it was. And the constructions are complicated. And uh, why are they doing that? If there's a clear logical example. Look at this tree. Enumerate all closed arithmetical formulas. Arithmetical formulas. Okay, you want it to be informal, right? So, why are you getting that? Yes, 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 please. I don't understand something because uh, you can express every rational number in a, in a first order language, right? Using a formula, right? You can express it and you just add, uh, add if one. You have, if you have the language. You have enough time. I don't understand. If you have the, if you have the language uh, of fields, yeah, first order fields, right? So you can express every rational, right? So you can, if you have but enough time. Then, then, the, then this, this theory of uh, rational numbers um, is extremely undecidable. Okay, okay, but uh, I mean, so if you have two real numbers, you have a rational between them, right? Mm -hmm. So basically. Uh, I mean, can't you use this to prove that there are no indiscernibles? No, because all indiscernibles will be above the standard rationals. Not, uh, ah, so they're not, you cannot say that you have a model. You know, so you have to take ultra products, essentially, right? To get that. No, 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 no. Maybe that you don't even have to take ultra products. Of course, it's easy to put them all above all standard numbers. But I think you can even squeeze them between in between, as a dedicated cut, fill it with the... Because well, I thought that this I belongs to a model, particular model, right? So It's part of the model, yes. The exact statement is what? There exists a model of the first order theory, of a given theory? Yes. 
in which you can embed this. Ah, okay, then I understand. So then, of course, you can take an, uh, a big alpha product and you can embed any other set in the Yes, system. yes. Okay, this, this is not a deep track. This so is just a, a, a single application of our It cannot exist in the like, standard uh, uh, model, right? It, it requires no standard models, actually. That's what makes it. Um, depends. Depends on the level of homogeneity of your structure. You see, if an, an automorphism is, is working inside the model, what is it doing? And it is, suppose it preserves order, and there are other relations and stuff, but it's an automorphism of that model. You will see indiscernibles arising sometimes, not always, arising as orbit, orbits of uh, this automorphism. Okay, no, 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 I, I started to understand this now. A little bit. Uh, just, uh, because model, model theory is respected. An automorphism uh, will uh, preserve n types. Okay, let's go back to Klini uh, Zaslavsky 3. The root is the empty set. And then each time, we branch and do a bit of logical deduction. We, we arrange our computations in, a, in some uniform way, so that each time we have some formulas here on the nth level. And here we add this and phi n and not phi n and do one more step of deduction. So <clears throat> if, it's a if the branch is inconsistent, it will stop. If it is consistent, it will continue forever. So an in infinite branch, any infinite branch, will be a completion <clears throat> in the arithmetical language. So it's enough actually to start with not the empty set, but with Robinson's arithmetic or something like that. A theory known not to have computable completions. So each branch of it will define the complete theory. And we know that they don't exist. The computable ones don't exist. So this is the failure of Koenig's lemma. Of Dennis Koenig from 1922 or something. Any finite branch in tree has a branch. But this failure in the computable world later led to very deep um, um, understandings um, about Ramsey theory. I can go ahead of myself and tell you. Koenig's lemma is not provable in uh, rather strong theories. But this is the compactness theorem which is used to, to prove equivalence between finite Ramsey and infinite Ramsey, finite Van der Waarden, infinite Van der Waarden, finite Hindman, infinite Hindman, and so on. But it itself is of great strength. <clears throat> A second example. Historical example is Specker's theorem. There is a computable coloring of triples in two colors. without a computable 
monochromatic set, infinite, without computable infinite monochromatic set. F of x less than y less than z is equal to z, z is <coughs> zero if every computer program, every Turing machine below x stops below y if and only if it stops below z. Clearly a computable coloring because for an actual Turing machine you can run it for y steps and you can run it for z steps. And one otherwise. Extract a homogeneous set. H F homogeneous. And suppose it is computable. Then we can compute the halting problem. How? Let's show that um, the color one is impossible. Grab a Turing machine which stops, which stops, let's say its first stop is between Y and Z. And the Turing machine is from below X. And it stops here. By indiscernibility, then consider Z and Z prime. Then X, Z, Z prime is of color 1 as well. But this Turing machine and all other finitely many of them stopped below Z prime if and only if it stopped below Z. So you do it finitely many times. Contradiction. So the color is zero. So now we can compute the halting problem. For any Turing machine, how to understand will it stop or not? You go to the first indiscernible and look at the next indiscernible and look whether it stops until here. If it stops until here, then it stops. But if it doesn't stop, it will never stop. Because stopping before Y is equivalent to stopping before Z. And so not stopping before Y is equivalent to not stopping before Z. So a Turing machine will go on forever if it hasn't stopped before Y. So Y prevents the infinite search. Because, yeah, because if you have an infinite monochromatic set, so you fix x, y, but z can be as, as big as you wish, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and so you have, a, if you, you, it's enough to test the Turing machine be, before y, yes. to know if it's will have a exactly. the problem and stuff. Exactly. Yes. And in this sense, I meant that the indiscernibles are upper bounds for spawning. But in what sense do you call x, y indiscernibles? Why? In what sense? Uh, uh -huh. Why, why uh, do they call them indiscernibles? They are not yet indiscernibles. They are a prototype of future indiscernibles. But they are indiscernible in this sense. That every formula of the form there is w. Phi of V 
W. It's indiscernible for one quantifier formulas. V, so this is the Turing machine, which is uh, looking for the witness for V. For v. So phi is quantifier 3, and W will uh, be the witness. Okay, we can do it without V. Like this. But for all the finite, <coughs> tu finitely many Turing machines here. Does it mean, as, but it doesn't mean, right? You cannot make the same conclusion about the finite Ramsey, that you have arbitrary large finite on a chromatic set. So it doesn't contradict anything, right? It's only the, the theorem. It's the same ah. theorem for every dimension starting from 3. And uh, let's say, okay, let me ask you uh, this way. Can you have a computable? No, in this dimension, this dimension 3, 2, okay, fix mm -hmm. this. But in fact, we know that for every car, K, we have a monochromatic set with at least K elements, right? Finite here. Mm -hmm. Can you have a computable sequence of those sets, of monochromatic sets of arbitrary of growing finite cardinality? <coughs> Will it give a contradiction or not? Um, you can't. Because so they will the same this now. Because X and Y will grow. Because uh, you can imitate by a Ramsey coloring the Klinia Zaslavsky tree. And this will be the finite finite colorings which are growing and growing and gro growing. And then they will in the infinite one they will grow into infinite monochromatic set. You can, just, still you, you, can, you can do arbitrarily large, but uh, <coughs> having nothing to do with each other. Computable. Yeah, so, again, so you have, once you have a computable sequence of finite monochromatic sets, you can construct a computable infinite monochromatic set, right? This. Um, no. They will have nothing to do with each other. You can construct computable finite of uh, arbitrary, arbitrarily large monochromatic sets. A sequence of them, but having nothing to do with each other. Yeah, okay, but so, I mean, this... Yeah, my question was if... Uh, but you say it's still but, possible, right? But to stick them together will lose, lose computability of the whole set. But. You say, you say it's still impossible, right, to have a computer with yes. sequence of finite Yes, this is, the, this is the interesting uh, thing in the logic which happens. Here's finite Ramsey theory, and we know it's provable by Josh Rado with the estimate of the tower of N2s. So it's a very um, uh, weak statement. Well, even Van der Wacken is probably stronger in its finite form. But in its infinite form, Van der Wacken is weaker. And then you're using full Koenig's lemma. Koenig's lemma, which is an extremely strong compactness principle. But what you get is a finite Ramsey theorem with quantifier for every n, infinite Ramsey n. So this statement is a consequence of two strong, strong, strong weaker, really weaker statements. But this is a myth that finite versions and infinite versions are equivalent. They are equivalent, modular, a statement which, which is very strong. And sometimes they are equivalent, for example, Ramsey for triples is here, and Ramsey for triples is equivalent to Koenig's theorem. So was I clear why, why there's no computable monochromatic sets? Because grabbing a Turing machine before X, we can check whether it will ever stop. Because if, if it will never stop, it will not stop before Y. It, and if it will stop, it, it has to stop before Y. Who's, who's uh, on this? This one. This one, yeah. 1950s. <clears throat> so, um, 
this is a, a baby kind of indiscernibility. Um, there is, so she, X, Y, Z are indiscernibles in the sense that they control existence of the counter example, of the example of this uh, existential formula. Y and Z are indiscernible for, 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 for this property, for existence of the example before it. If it exists before Z, it's pressing down. It will have to exist before Y. If it doesn't exist before Y, it will have to not exist before Z. It's already baby indiscernibility. Let me give a third example and a fourth example of the prototype theorems. Because the um, fixed point on the compact in, is prominent in your book. And uh, there's a prototype theorem for that here as well. I didn't see trees, but uh, it, it's all connected with trees. If you open Kepris's book, Classical Descriptive Set Theory, every page is about trees. <clears throat> Three. A bounded sequence of real numbers without a computable limit. A bounded computable sequence without a computable limit. Many people saw it. There's a guy in Rio de Janeiro chiting who is very fond of this sequence and he wants to privatize it, but actually it's a, it's a very old invention. How do you like Cantor's theorem uh, vertical or horizontal? Let's do it horizontal. A bounded sequence, it will be even increasing, but without a limit. Or you can do it like what Zanavir Strass, a bounded sequence, every bounded sequence has um, a convergent subsequence. This one is the sum of 2 to the minus f of n, where f of n is uh, enumerating some non-computable set. If there was a computable limit, you could check it, you could check whether a point belongs to the set or not by simply uh, usual epsilon delta argument. A, a, a clear term will be missing if it doesn't belong. Or in Bagsanovich-Strass, <coughs> how do we do the counters method? Dividing in half. Dividing in half. Where are infinitely many points? Here or here? And here are your three. Uh, again. Here or here. You can build the tree and see that, like in Koenig's lemma, existence. You can arrange such a sequence that this tree will not have a computable sub subsequence. This statement. Every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence is also strong and also equivalent to Koenig's lemma and also equivalent to Ramsey for triples. And number four. <clears throat> There's a computable function f from the square computable continuous function from the square into itself. Computable continuous without a fixed point.
we know from Brouwer that uh, in the classical situation there will be a fixed point, but actually in the computable world you can avoid the, the fixed point. And there are stronger theorems how you can really hide the fixed point that even even oracles will not will not be able to to find it. This is a theorem by Aryovkov. Nineteen sixty-two, I think. So there is a computable continuous function without the computable fixed point, right? Yes. So these are the four proto prototypes, and now I will move into another area where indiscernibles came from. It's called uh, set theory. So this is, these are beginnings of logic. Just computability, just the halting problem. There are some halting coding of the halting problem. What's a Ramsey cardinal? <clears throat> Kappa above omega is Ramsey. If for every sequence or colorings of I subsets of kappa into two colors there exists what, what is I? I it's not natural. Ah, I have oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> there exists a simultane simultaneously homogeneous subset Unbounded in Kappa. I think the regularity is somehow obvious, so it's really of order type Kappa. Simultaneously homogeneous with regard to all the colors. Yeah. So you can say, you can say, uh, ah. the dimension is finite, but all finite dimensions are possible. So all I subsets of H have color F I. Uh, well, sorry, F F I color the same, right? I no, no, they can be of different colors. It's monochromatic. No, 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 I understand. Uh, but uh, monochromatic for every I, for, for every, every, for every, for every coloring. But the color we don't know. Yeah, every I subs. Okay. suddenly become meaningful. We color um, n duples of elements of kappa with formulas and we build the model of ZFC below kappa. Actually we can build the model of ZFC plus lots and lots and lots of interesting large cardinals before that. But Ramsey cardinal is explicitly Ramsey. By the way, for omega it's not true, but there's a, a result of mine that <coughs> H, so for omega, for every sequence of colorings of an element 
subsets of omega. There's H, which is simultaneously homogeneous for all of them, starting from some point. A kind of diagonal. And um, impossibly strong. Eh? And it's, 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 it's extremely strong. It's um, at the strength. I have taken later tell pi one one c zero. It's a huge set of theory. I haven't published it yet because I'm gathering more variations of it. Because I have a variation with trees, embeddability of trees, trees having or not having infinite branch. Um, it will be a lot of stuff. Anyway, this was noticed by um, Mastowski and Tarski first, I think, how to define it, and the Erdos. Erdos defined it, um, defined a smaller cardinal where, where H is infinite. It's called the Erdos cardinal. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue. By the way, if you like the measurable cardinal, uh, measurable, that's called M, is around C. And H can be chosen to belong to the ultra filter. Moreover, the collection of all cardinals, kappa, kappa smaller than measurable, Kappa is Ramsey. What? Belongs to the outer filter. <laughs> and in this gap between Ramsey and the outer filter. The outer filter, even the uh, complete. The, com the complete, complete non principal. Uh, outer filter on uh, the cardinal. Yeah. The measurable cardinal. In this gap between Ramsey and measurable is being explored, and uh, with the with the co-author, we invented baby measurable cardinals. They are almost measurable, but they are like fragments of the measurable, and they are much uh, much higher than Ramsey. Then it has a huge number of Ramsey before, and actually they are a club, if you, if you know what's, what's a club. So Ramsey are like the children in comparison with measurable. Now, from these prototypes, let's have an actual um, set of indiscernibles born out of a out of Ramsey theory. <clears throat> First, just for um, just to remind ourselves, but not prove, Ramsey theorem for triples is equivalent to Ramsey theorem for n tuples with any number of colors. This we know, this is easy. And it was a long story and a long-term open problem in logic. What happens in dimension two? Ramsey theorem for two, this is the discovery which appears in advances of mathematics from last year of Yokoyama and Pate, both geniuses. Yokoyama and Pate. 
that run the theorem for pairs has no strength at all. It can't even prove the totality of the Ackermann function. So run the theorem for two colors can't prove even consistency. Yeah, two colors in uh, okay. pairs. I see, move on. Two colors and pairs. And I think uh, it's, it may still be open uh, when you release the number of colors. So this is Yokoyama and Pate last year. No, actually, 17. <clears throat> Let's prove the strength of Ramsey theorem for triples. No, for 2n two, two plus 1. We know this dimension. Well, this dimension is equivalent for triples. How do we do that? Normally, we prove a theorem by induction. But this time, we will prove it induction from a theorem. We grab any formula of arithmetic. And with one, one extra variable x and prove that if there exists such x, then there exists the minimal such x. We'll prove it. This is, uh, this is the kind of induction you, you never use. In the norm, normal mathematics, induction is rarely with one quantifier, very rarely with two quantifiers. I think all complex analysis, analytic, analytic functions, uh, arguments can be encoded with a double induction. Well, we see double induction sometimes, like that the original proof of Van der Waarden and Hale Stewart uh, had the concentric induction, one induction inside, and each step of induction is induction itself. <clears throat> but this is a random any instance of mathematical induction. Yes, I'm not speculating yet about extremely unimaginable groups, about the uh, actions on uh, uh, compacts, Hausdorff count compacts, or non compacts, or uh, 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 other things, uh, and uh, free set classes, and how the Ramsey property is equivalent to amenability of a certain group of automorphisms. Uh, to the Ramsey property of the age of of this, the structure, I could speculate. I don't know. Do you want Do you want me to uh, push into these speculations, uh, or actually uh, tell you tell you something I know better? As you wish. Okay. So. Okay, I'll speculate a bit, and then I'll continue. <clears throat> Ramsey property can give indiscernible. And the smallest indiscernibles, which I can get easily, are the indiscernibles I about to show, to show you. This is the strength of piano arithmetic. But any time you mention the word Borel, so here is piano arithmetic, which is the same as Koenig's lemma, which is the same as Ramsey theorem, theorem for triples, which is the same as um, Balzanovir Strauss, which is the same as Brauer's theorem about a fixed point, which is the same as the theorem about intermediate, intermediate point of a continuous function as well. It is also at this strength. So here is Ramsey for pairs. Here is 
for all n Ramsey theorem for n. And I wonder where in your book you have an arbitrary n and where in your book you have for all n because it's a difference. Well, you need for all n, for all n. Anyway, and at some point you have the implication. Here's how the previous theorem implies Ramsey theorem. So, what was it? The extreme amenability of automorphisms of uh, rational numbers, wasn't it? <clears throat> um, let's create a very small digression. Let's grab a model M of something very strong, which does compactness. For example, the analytic. Piano arithmetic has enough um, tools to encode such things as the set of pairs, factorize the set of pairs, and so on. Piano arithmetic can create this object, the rational numbers, from the point of view of this model of piano arithmetic. And by the back and forth argument, inside the model of piano arithmetic, it can even prove that any set, linearly ordered set, which is dense, is isomorphic to this one. Because piano arithmetic has induction, and it's an inductive argument. It can be just forth, or can be back and forth. Well, the smallest and the largest element, right? And M, M is any model, uh, uncountable, whatever. Right. And you immediately <coughs> have this group acting on itself, but the level of transitivity is much greater because M has non-standard elements. It will have M finite sets. And it can do over spill and uh, arguments which are kind of uh, uh, model theoretic tricks. And I wonder whether, uh, and of course you can arrange uh, the random graph, you can arrange uh, rational Lorison space uh, or approximate uh, real Lorison space inside the model of arithmetic. I wonder whether this mm, may give uh, examples with extra properties. This was a digression. <coughs> so, the coloring is Is that x1, xn, or y1, yn? So this is zero? No, here, phi, phi of a. And x2. And one otherwise. 
the first phi here, Andre, mm -hmm. here, phi of a y1 yn or x1 or xn? Is it correct? Is it oh. So, you see, the idea is the same. If there is x1, if there is a, a, a witness y1 somewhere before x1, then uh, if for all y1 below x1, something holds. Then for all uh, z1 below xn plus 1, it holds. So we can prove it by the induction on the complexity of the formula. Let's pretend the formula is for all x1, there is x2. Phi, x, x1, x2. So by Ramsey theory, <coughs> get this infinite set H such that if you have the parameter x before this indiscernible and for all y1 before the next indiscernible there existed an example somewhere then there, there would exist an example of such indiscernible before, before the next indiscernible here. Exactly the same principle that n indiscernibles will give you upper bounds for your searches, for the searches um, of the example or absence of, the, of this example. This is how Ramsey theory for 2n plus 1 implies induction with n quantifiers. So Ramsey for all n's will imply all of the n arithmetic. And then comes that this statement is stronger than Ramsey for any given n. So this is stronger, but not much stronger. Proof there is a measure in the ordinals. Put omega, omega here, epsilon ze zero here, and epsilon, epsilon zero for full Ramsey, Ramsey with the quantifier. But the, the um, theorem with end extensions, monochromatic set, which is simultaneously monochromatic for infinitely many colorings, starting from some point for each of them, So my statement is here. 
And it's a kind of compactness principle that you can do uh, countably many um, mutually unrelated Ramsey uh, or compactness arguments simultaneously and encode it in one set. It's a, it's a principle with a meaning. And I have a, a finite version of it as well, like a finite arithmetical version of it. So this is the infinity version. Now you understand why I call indiscernibles. Let me show you even stronger indiscernibles. Do we have time? Grava. I will not do Kuhnian's indiscernibles for L. It's a very interesting thing, but it takes preparation because uh, L is a very delicate thing. So I'm doing only rough, rough things. So Paris Harrington is finally granted with the extra condition that the monochromatic set satisfies this. You can think of it. The cardinal is bigger than the minimum. Okay, it's a set of cardinals, right? No, 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 this is finite Ramsey. Ah, it's a finite. Yes. So the monochromatic set is positioned on the right hand side, you can say. Or you can say it's so it's so big that its minimal element is. Right. But in Nash Williams' theory, theory, in the theory of barriers, you can see that they deal with those minimums, minimums, subtracting the minimum, subtracting the minimum again and doing a shift, subtracting the minimum doing a shift. I want to connect it with that as well. So the arithmetic can't prove it. So Paris Harrington, a finite statement, is here. Just above piano arithmetic. But piano arithmetic plus consistency of piano arithmetic still can't prove it. Piano arithmetic plus consistency of ZFC can't prove it. <coughs> so what's this, this, this statement? For every A there is B, such that for every coloring F. For every A, or for every E, for every coloring of E cuples of A, B in two colors, there is H of this size. Let me change it a little bit for an easier proof. 2 to the mean H, E mean h plus 1. Just a better pigeonhole. Start with the model of binary m. Not the piano arithmetic, of something small, not strong. I delta 0. I delta 0 plus x of nothing. So we have no, no difficult induction, no coding, no capabilities beyond exponentiation. So this is E, non-standard. This is A. A could be zero, doesn't matter. So there is a pair. There exists a pair. Such that for every coloring we can extract homogeneous subset. There is H homogeneous size of H bigger than E plus 2. And this is M. So M is nothing. 
but we will build a model. You know that existence of models is unprovable. Existence of models is equivalent to consistency. So let's do a coloring very similar to this one. <clears throat> F E to E. So all A smaller than the X zero. E. E plus one. E plus two. Two E. That's the color of two uh, e plus one tuples of elements of in A B. And let's extract the homogeneous set H. Monochromatic for this color. And this is mean H. H zero. Let's grab a microscope and look at the set H. This is mean H. Then come the next E elements. Then come the next E elements. Etc. Maybe I want this E in front of here. In front of here. Yes, that's better. Now we have the pigeonhole. How many of those E tuples in a row we have? Two to the mean H. Plus one. So here we have two to the mean H possible subsets. Controlling this A, we control this A. So, or maybe even less is enough. So for some A, it's Equivalence of some A, it's not equivalent, we don't yet know the color. But the pigeonhole argument will give us color Z0. So, for every E tuple, let's define a state, uh, a set A of those A's where they are equivalent. And the, the, com the complement of it is where they are not equivalent. But because we have so many of them, there will exist two E tuples where the set of those A's has to coincide. So they, they with each of these parameters A, will be equivalent to them, to these ones. Well, I don't know where these two E tuples happen. And clearly, this is overkill. You can just do it by one more point, like, like this. But uh, it's overkill clearly illustrates it. So the color is zero. So we can take the first omega points here, I. I is the supremum of H0, H1, H2 for 
i smaller than omega. And notice that i believes there is x to all y there is z phi of x <coughs> x, y, z if and only if m believes for all x smaller than h1 there is y smaller than h2 for all z smaller than h3 phi of x y z so in i there are no there's no need for in, infinite searches all the searches are marked by the indiscernible elements h1 h2 h3 and so on if you have a parameter okay you'll have to move a little bit this is why the, i took the care of the parameter so it can be a point here then it's not h1 here but the next indiscernible and the next indiscernible and the next indiscernible so this is how the model is built a model of piano arithmetic a similar procedure with indiscernibles can be done for this theory, I can do it. For this theory, I can do it now. And Friedman can do it for ZFC plus Malo Cardinals. Finite arithmetical statements, combinatorial statements, unprovable in ZFC plus large cardinals. So, can you give a, like a formal definition of indiscernibles? Uh, there are different kinds. These ones are, are called diagonal in the circles. The first ones I gave are called. Uh, the first one was using, using the linear order, you mean? Yes. But these ones are using the linear order as well? No. Yes, so, uh, without the linear, linear order, you can introduce the linear order and then introduce indiscernibility. And sometimes it doesn't come. Shalak has a whole theory about it. Shalak wrote a book about indiscernibles. It's called non-structure theory. Right, speculating about uh, uh, connecting. Uh, uh, I first uh, saw glimpses uh, of uh, your kind of Ramsey theory in Czechoslovakian uh, authors. Misetril, uh, Rödel, Goebel, Matushek, Prömel uh, in the 80s and early 90s. They were wondering whether you can have it for graphs, the Ramsey property, but omitting certain subgraphs. And I couldn't. I, I couldn't uh, <coughs> make a Paris Harrington kind of thing out of it. So, the least which is guaranteed is lots of statements at the level of piano arithmetic. Because, just because of connection with Ramsey theory. But, uh, how to push it further? For example, are there R0? Do you know this theory? No. It's, a, it's a equivalent to something called open Ramsey theory. For every coloring of open infinite subsets in two colors, there's H whose infinite subsets are monochromatic. This is a much much stronger st stronger thing. Some people call it Nash-Williams theorem. Tadorchevich 
calls it Nash Williams theorem, Simpson calls it Open Ramsey theorem, um, but there's a version for Borel color colorings where it's called the Galvin Prickrick theorem. So this is this, this theory, it's just one axiom. Something like this, something infinite dimensional. Once it becomes infinite dimensional, not like here, arbitrarily high finite dimensional, but truly infinite dimensional. I was reading your book yesterday with this Milman uh, theorem, where Dvoretsky is arbitrarily high um, finite dimension is substituted by a subspace of infinite dimension. And I was wondering whether this just literally is a, a statement of this, of this trend. This theorem may never try to uh, find the dynamic equivalent, but uh, yeah, in this book there is a chapter about this basically what happens with uh, infinite Ramsey type statements, right? It's mm -hmm. related more to this uh, phenomenon of uh, oscillation stability, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's thing. But of this I never thought. Well, I knew this naturally. That which in his orange book uh, is yeah. somehow connecting oscillation st stability with uh, uh, Ramsey of, uh, of, uh, of very high dimensions. Like, he has a, a very high dimensional Hales Jude, which I never saw before. Mm. Is it there? Is it I, I don't remember. I have this book. Take a dense subset, saturated, densely ordered subset, right, which is saturated, kappa saturated with this kappa cardinal, and take its group of homomorphisms, linear preserving, load order preserving. It would be very interesting to see it. It should have stronger properties. Stronger than the regular cardinals, because this linear order is saturated for regular cardinals under GCH. Shalach uh, has many theories about them, and uh, Conway was interested about them. He calls them hyperreal numbers because he introduced a bit of uh, hyperreal surreal, 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 surreal numbers. So for every regular cardinal, uh, Q omega one, if con continuum is, is omega one, then it's full, it's a full saturation of this linear order. But if continuum is uh, is bigger than it's not. Yeah, so that would be very interesting because there should be some stronger properties, dynamical, dynamical kind. Maybe not just actions on compact spaces, but maybe on some bigger class. I, I want to cook a so that after after Bergson's lectures, I want to cook up dynamical proofs. <clears throat> But you see, here's the dynamical proof. So this is the corner of Ramsey theory, which is uh, which doesn't favor indiscernibles very much. It favors uh, structure, like uh, arithmetic progressions or return sets. You know. I think it should be doable as well because in this I want the dynamic return set to be like random, and the indiscernibles they are random. There's this random feature about them. Yeah, but this this link. All the link, right? Fustenberg, the mm -hmm. series of Fustenberg between dynamical systems and Ramsey. It's between ergodic dynamics, actions on, right, on, on measured spaces, and of course the theory is not very much developed beyond the separable case, beyond the standard uh, Borel case. So I guess if you want to deal with high order, but the separable case is is good here. Because PA has a conservative extension which uh, talks about countable sets and, and, and stuff. Oh, so the, that in this case, if it's separable, it's just enough to work on a standard, uh, standard for all so, so, so this is some people call it separable mathematics. Yeah. So if not, if you want to go to high order Ramsey, then you should probably go to uh, not separable mesh spaces, which are very, very fancy, right? Very not mesh normal. I have no theory for them is not greatly developed. 
I have no uh, uh, intuition there. Even the simple trick, uh, ergodic trick um, with Van der Waarden and Hales Jewett, uh, how do they find the compact? Well, just find the, the compact closure of one point. And then it becomes the compact. It's, it's like uh, cheating. And then the, the whole theorem out of nowhere. <clears throat> Another thing I thought about a little bit uh, is the uh, to run can conjecture. Have you heard about that one? Oh, by, by the, the, sum, the sum of one of the n divergent makes the set large. For example, if it will must come be a b rich for every k and uh, whatever else. But you see, how to color arithmetical progression? You have this triple. Uh, the first element, the distance and the length. <clears throat> I'm hoping to encode some, some, something about the uh, AP richness, which is un unprovable, giving me indiscernibles from arithmetical progressions. Another thing, uh, the space of linear orders, the group of uh, linear orders. How about the group of well orders? But in what sense uh, the group you mean? Uh, by composition. Yes. So you have natural numbers and an order on them. Okay. And, and another order on them, which is uh, a well also a well order right. of the same length. Then there is a permutation of the natural numbers which sends one of them to another. Okay. And to another, and to another. But linear orders, um, they don't have enough structure to encode the logic stuff. But well orders do. No, they don't form a group, right? Under permutations? Let's, let's think. I understand how you know how to play it. Ah, the... Um, they form a compact space. The um, two arbitrary ones, are, we don't know how to, how to multiply. Come on, okay. But something, something still can be done about, about, about that. Um, for example, uh, mapping them on an in initial segment of the other one, of the other one. One of them is mapped on the, other, on the initial segment of the other one. Yes? Yes, they're not a group. Okay, there we are.